So hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Sai Hike. In our last episode, we had briefly discussed about how universe was created and we had also discussed about a cal- cosmic calendar where we came to know that we humans had evolved in the very last minute of that cosmic calendar. So following up that discussion, in this episode we'll be discussing on how we have evolved. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as far as the human history is concerned, human existed long before the history for countless generation. But they didn't know that this species stands out from the countless other animals present on this planet. So back in time when the so-called prehistory or historic era humans were not so different from other animals alive on this planet they were insignificant animals with no impact on their environment it was still 7 million years ago when a chimpanzee gave birth to two daughters and one of them happened to be a great grandmother of our human race humans have evolved around 2.5 million years ago in east africa from an early genus of apes called Australopithecus meaning southern ape based on a nature's education article this genus Australopithecus is a collection of human species that lived within the span of time period from 4.18 million years to 2 million years ago Australopithecus was originally defined by Raymond Dart in 1924 on the basis of a small child skull found in Twang in South Africa which was dated about to be 2.3 million years old this species was the first terrestrial bipedal species by that i mean is that this species was the first species to walk on two legs so this was just after the evolution of humans around 500000 years later some archaic men and women moved started to move from the eastern part of the africa towards the northern side of the africa and they further go gone beyond the africa towards uh, europe and southern part of the asia as well so this movement was a very slow process and took around millions of years during which some humans had undergone certain changes in their body structure like humans who have moved towards the more snowy and mountainous region needed a bulkier body structure with more muscles and they needed to be strong as compared to the others who were surviving in the jungles basically this gave rise to the six different species of humans that existed all together on the same planet but were not aware of each other's presence which brings us to our next part of discussion starting with the homo neanderthals the man of the neander valley mostly portrayed as the caveman they are muscular than us and are better suited for surviving in the cold condition according to researchers this species of human had lived in eurasia until about 40000 years before going to extinct along with them there was another human species that was living on the mountains that was the homo denisovans the man from the denisovan caves these caves were located in siberia and their species has potentially survived as late as 30000 years to 14000 years ago in the new guinea these denisovan caves were originally discovered by in 1970s by a russian paleontologist nikolai ovodov now coming down from the europe to the eastern part of the asia where existed a species of human that lived the most number of years they were the homo erectus or the upright man they lived for around 2 million years making it the most durable human species ever now moving from the eastern part of the asia to the southern part of the asia where there existed a subspecies of homo erectus the homo solensis the man from the solo valley these species were living in the indonesian islands named java and dated to be living in between 116000 to 108000 years ago along with homo solensis there existed another uh, human species that was in the in the same region they were homo florensis so there is a interesting story behind this is that few human species that moved to the island named flores in indonesia and they were stuck down there because of the high tides of the sea and they couldn't come back so following that the 
the resources on the island were depleting and the bigger humans or the hu humans with the bigger size require more energy as in more resource to survive so they were started becoming extinct and the humans were who were shorter in size who required lesser resources to survive were more favored so as we have learned as we have discussed about the five different species that were coexisting together on the planet so there was another species that is the species of ours the homo sapiens the only existing human species so what exactly the homo sapien means homo means humans and sapien means wise so then big question the next interesting big question arises is that why would one call one species to be wise over the other species to answer this question one has to be go beyond 70000 years ago when one of the three revolutions of the history kick started the cognitive revolution so what exactly is cognitive revolution this was a movement that has started in 1950 where the scientists perform the study of brain like uh, how do we think how do we process our emotions how do we plan etc etc so like i mentioned earlier that our ancestors the southern apes had a slightly bigger brain as compared to their ancestors if we take this as an analogy that bigger the brain size the wiser you are then shouldn't the neanderthals or homo neanderthals would be the wisest person on this planet and wouldn't they be shouldn't be they be surviving on this till now for homo sapiens the brain size comprises only 2 to 3% of the whole body weight which consumes around 25% of the whole body energy the archaic men used to divert their energy in two directions first for searching for food and secondly their muscles got wasted with that for more than 2 million years the human neural network grew and another thing that happened over this period of time is that human trait started to walk upright which has eased them to scan the savanna and freed their hands or arms to throw signal and do other stuff so this brings us to the next part of our discussion that is building of social skills among human population the upright gait was handy for some individuals but females paid an extra price for it most of the deaths of females occurred during the childbirth due to constriction of birth canals women who gave birth to infants with small heads and brains lived longer to give birth to many more but the natural selection favored the earlier situation of premature babies human babies were helpless dependent on elders for their protection food education and sustenance this situation helped in developing social skills among humans raising children requires a constant support from other members of the family since human babies were born underdeveloped they could be educated and socialized to a far extent than any other animal now moving on to our last part of our discussion that is the how developing tools have affected the human evolution earlier human used rocks to cut or break the bone the question comes in mind why bones because during those times humans were below the food chain let me tell you by an example if a lion hunts a bison so it will finish it first then the hyenas will come and finish its portion after that the humans would scavenge from the remainings the first production of the hand axes and other large cutting tools were dated around 1.76 million years ago with this development of tools the human jumped up the food cycle they were able to hunt animals easily furthermore they were able to weave their clothes during 500000 to 300000 years homo sapiens were using fire on a daily basis this became a dependable source for humans as it became a source for their light a source for keeping them warm and it also acted as a weapon against deadly animals the best thing that happened was to cook food cooking food killed germs out of the raw meat and it reduced the chewing time of the humans leading to an extension of a long teeth with this we come to an end of this episode i hope you all have enjoyed and i leave you with a question how would this world look like if all the human species 
were coexisting. Do let us know in the comment section below and stay tuned for our next episode.